Yes. I will do some light uh, housekeeping. Yes. Let everybody know. So, um, welcome. Good evening, everyone. This is a special talk that we're going to have with Dr. Guido Marcel live from Grenada. I'm so excited to have this conversation with Dr. Uh, Marcel. We, um, once again, my name is Zella Palmer, and I am the director and chair of the Dillard University Ray Charles Program in African American Material Culture in New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, I run also the Food Studies Program, which is uh, a food studies program here at Dillard University. And Uncle Guido, Dr. Guido Marcel, is uh, my uncle. He's like a godfather to me. He lived in my parents' house for uh, quite some time while he was studying and getting his uh, medical degree at the University of Chicago. And I, I think I told some of my students who are listening about that story. And he has, when I was growing up, his room was always full of plants and <laughs> full of nutmeg, which is the, uh, the, the, the spice of, of Grenada. Uh, the Caribbean island where he comes from. He's a native of Grenada and he is what I consider the George Washington Carver of the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm excited to hear his presentation. Um, and it, please don't, um, you know, everyone, if I call him Uncle Guido, I can't help it sometimes because that's, that, that's how I know him, but I'll try my best to call him Dr. Marcel. <laughs> And I have all of your, uh, let me share my screen. I have, which presentation would you, which slides would you like to use first? And so, um, before we put, before, um, good evening all. It is now just after seven in Grenada because we have about two hours ahead. So it's dark here already. Um, Zella, I want you to um, first maybe put up the poster. <laughs> The poster, the, the name poster. of the. Uh, which one is that one? I'm. Sh I have the. the poster, no, the poster you made. The poster you made. Oh, oh, oh okay. I have the to... title. The title of the talk. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let me pull that up. One second. Yeah. And good evening to all the wonderful participants. Are there your students plus or? Some of my students and some, uh, we have another guest that's online and then a lot of people are gonna watch it later. That's why I'm recording this. Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. Godzilla, you look very much like a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you see my screen? I don't know why it's not coming up. It's not coming up yet. Okay. Okay. I'm trying. Let me see. Okay. Well, maybe I could start. Um, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. You named, good evening, all. And it is my pleasure to be with you this evening. I would try to share the spice experience of Grenada with you. The title of the presentation was named The Power of Spice. Now I created a little ditty from the name, The Power of Spice. The Power of Spice, the message in the title will make you think twice and alert to all the senses of many things oh so very nice. A spice for all season and for the right reason. So that's the introduction from the title. <laughs> yes. What I would like us to do now, uh, can you pull up um, Grenada Wikipedia? I don't know why it's not letting me share. Okay. Um, I keep on clicking it, but I can share uh, your your presentations, your slides. I think in no, but before I get to the slides, I, there are some things I want to talk about. Sorry, I should say maybe how I plan to do <laughs> the presentation. Sure. Um, at first, I'll be more auditory. I'll be speaking about things before we get to the actual PowerPoint presentations. 
I want to introduce you, you know, in a dynamic way to some of the things in Grenada. Okay. Um, the Wikipedia, if it could be pulled up, there was a column that showed you statistics on Grenada. So I didn't put that in the PowerPoint, you know, like the size of Grenada, the population, the size is 134 square mile. The population is just about 124,000. So we are small, you know. The language is mainly English. The population is mainly um, Afro-Grenadian, 80%, more like 80% of the population. Religion, a number of religions, maybe uh, Catholic, Anglican, and um, Pentecostal. So that's the kind of background. Um, our literacy rate is fairly high, maybe over 90%. Um, so that kind of speed, um, our, our GDP is not great, but we can survive with what we do make. Um, I'm sorry we can't pull that up, but some of the other um, additions, Grenada consists of, when it's, it's like the, one of the southernmost islands of the Southern Caribbean. Our southern neighbor is Trinidad and we are washed on the eastern coast by the Atlantic Ocean and on the western coast by the Caribbean Sea. We are volcanic in origin. And I guess it is recorded that our last volcano erupted 2 million years ago. So essentially we think that our volcanoes are dormant, but we do have a volcano just north of us in the sea. That it's called Kikam Jenny, like if it's a donkey or a horse. And from time to time, that volcano spouts. So it sends seawater shooting into the air. We are hoping that it would never erupt in a dramatic way. My apologies. Now I'm able to share the screen. So just let me know whenever you're ready for the presentation. Presentation, yes. Okay. All right. So, um, so Grenada consists of three major islands. Grenada, Caracou, and Pity Martinique. Um, volcanic in orig origin. Uh, we are kind of mountainous. So we still have, when you come to visit, you will see, we still have a number of volcanic craters that show the existence, you know, the pre existence or pre um, historic times. Um, they are more or less lake filled now, so they are filled with water. And so they're not creating any problems as of now. Um, and they run from almost the south of the island to the north of the island. So our geology is mainly volcanic. And that is one of the reasons that our soil is very rich. Uh, we are located 12 degrees north and 61 degrees west. One of the reasons that we seem to be very successful in spices is that our latitude is similar to that of the islands in Indonesia where lots of spice, spices grow. So we have the volcanic soil and we have the sort of correct latitude for spice growth. Um, our high speed is just over 2,000 feet, 2,700 feet. It is called Mount St. Catherine. So we are hilly, but not very mountainous. Um, we tend to have two seasons, a rainy season and a dry season. Not like we near territory that has uh, four seasons. So we just have a rainy season and a dry season. And the rainy seasons run from June to November. Incidentally, that coincides with the hurricane season. So our hurricane season is also June to November, and that could be kind of smooth. Our last big hurricane was in 2004, mm -hmm. Ivan, which was very destructive. It devastated over 95% of all the nutmeg trees on the island. Yeah. So it was very destructive. And then the next year, there was another hurricane. Ivan was in September. 2004, and in June, we had another hurricane, 2005, Emily, that did some further destruction. So we are still sort of in a recovery mode from those serious uh, devastation. Basically, um, apart from the two seasons, 
we are now feeling the effect of climate change. So things are not behaving. For example, this November, we had a lot of rain. Luckily, from a geology and our terrain, we do not have plenty flat lands. So we do not have flooding. Whereas our neighbors who are flatlands like Trinidad was denudated with lots of flooding. Uh, the rain falls and tend to speedily hasten to the sea. Uh, we have small, I wouldn't say rivers, but rivulets and drains. So the water runs quickly to the sea. So we do not have flooding. So that is not, do not create a disaster for us. Um, we are, we boast very large vegetation. And at this time of the year, the island is very green. So we have a number of um, forest species and also cultivated species. So the island is very, very green. We'll get into that here. Our major um, economic activities are tourism, agriculture. Uh, we also have um, construction and we last, we add to that list education because we do have a medical school on board, St. George's University, which is an American school. And that is one of the schools that produces maybe most of the doctors. It's one of the most popular offshore American school. It provides the largest number of graduates that enter the American system. So basically, and small business. So basically, that is our background. Before we get into the slide presentation, I want to introduce to you how pervasive is spice in our country. It has sort of impinged on the names of almost most industries in the country. So first of all, we are called the Spice Isle or Islands of Spice. On our flag, there is the nutmeg. There's also, that is one of the, the emblem of the nutmeg is on our flag. So it speaks very highly. Um, we name our malls. We have a mall named Spiceland Mall. We have hotels, Spice Inn. One of our most popular ice cream is called Sugar and Spice. And compared with your Mardi Gras, the sobriquet of a carnival is Spice Mass. So we advertise Spice Mass. <laughs> so when anybody's coming, you come to Grenada to enjoy Spice Mass. That is our carnival, that is our Mardi Gras, which is usually in August. Our convention center is called Spice Basket. Our radio station is called Spice Capital Radio. We, survive, we support the yachting industry with Spice Island Marine Services. For health, we have Spice Medical Center. There, for religion, there is Spice Island Ministries. Um, for fish market, we have the Spice Fish House. And for health laboratory, Spice Isle Imaging. I just thought I would have introduced those to you. Um, we also have for tourism, we have Spiceland Tours uh, and we have Spice Isle um, Restaurant and Bar. I also want to introduce you, before we go to the slides, to some noteworthy sayings and riddles. So one of the popular riddles in Grenada is a lady in a boat with a red petticoat. And that is actually, can you see the picture? Is it, can you pick it up? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Yes. A lady in a boat with a red petticoat is actually a riddle for the nutmeg. You see the lady, this is the boat. The pericarp is considered the boat and the nutmeg with the mace on it is considered the lady in the boat with a red petticoat. 
Additionally, we have a song which was written by actually one of my neighbors many years ago, which says, how a sexy soul, how a spicy soul is Grenada become from? <laughs> so, and that is how it is repeated. And people like that song. As a matter of fact, most of the other Caribbean countries have borrowed it and put their island name into it. But it, it's actually the origin is Grenada. Continuing, um, another saying we have is that you, you use a pinch of nutmeg, means that you always use nutmeg in small quantities. Um, there is unwritten word, which we call a mm, <laughs> which is just a touch of spice into whatever you are doing. There is a healing spray, which we call which goes by the name nutmeg, and it is used in designs. So there are some designers who do cloth, t-shirts, jerseys with the nutmeg logo. In Grenada, you cannot miss our specials like spicy rum and spicy wines. And um, one of the famous drinks we have, which I'll get to in the, is, is called under the counter. <laughs> under the counter is a drink composing of many spices, herbs, and other plant material, which the shopkeepers don't keep on the shelf, but they keep it under the counter. And the gentleman why, would call and ask for a shot of under the counter, which is supposed to be an invigorated drink with aphrodisical properties. So that is the story that goes with it. So it is never kept above the counter. It is um, sort of secluded or sheltered under the counter and you ask for what you want. But there are as many under the counter preparations as there are shops because it is randomly made. Spices, herbs, seeds, a whole mirage, yes selection in, in, in that under the counter beverage. So I just thought um, I'll introduce that to you. And also um, it is said, an eggnog is not an eggnog without Grenada nutmeg. And rum punch is not rum punch without Grenada nutmeg. Um, and um, I wonder if you know that um, your state, um, Louisiana, has a similar history to Grenada in that we were also controlled by the French. And one of the names was actually La Grenade, which was changed by the British to Grenada. And it is very interesting in that your state is the only state that call your county parishes. And Grenada, our divisions are also parishes. <laughs> so we have the parishes in Grenada, St. George, St. Mark, et cetera. The voting entities in Grenada are also parishes. So it is very interesting that we have that similarity. And I thought I would mention um, Connecticut. Connecticut decided to be very ingenious and they are called the nutmeg state because they have manufactured nutmeg out of wood and sold it as nutmeg. So that is why they are called the nutmeg state. Uh, so, um, I think maybe we can go to the PowerPoint now. Okay, which one did you want? The to first pick? one, um, Grenada the Spice Isle, the one with the purple background. Okay. Mm. The one with the purple background. Yeah. This one, yes, beautiful.
So in keeping with the power of spice, I'll present to you Grenada Isles of Spice. And I try to keep it in line with the course that you are doing. So I've selected things that maybe could be, you know, relevant to you. So you could go to the next slide, please. Okay, so we did this already. That was the background of Grenada, which you can check on your, on your own. You could go to Grenada and Wikipedia. So some of our major crops, spices, cocoa, banana, coconut, fruits, ground provisions. Uh, that is um, linguistically, that is a term we use for lots of the crops that grow on the ground. So like for yams, sweet potatoes, dashi, tanya, cassava, we call them ground provisions. I don't know if that is a term that you all, as any would ever been familiar with. I think that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. We call ground provisions, yeah. So in Grenada, in the language, linguistically, you talk about cooking provisions. Yeah. And that's what it, it means, okay? Sugar cane and vegetables, a mix of vegetables. So continue. Okay, I sort of give you the names, the scientific names of the ground provision, so that if you want to Google it for future studies, you could, um, you know, get additional information. So yam is diascoria. We do a variety of yams, okay? And this is real yam. Whereas in some states you call your yam, sweet, sweet potato is called yam. But our yam is yam. <laughs> And we have a variety of yam. We have yellow yams, white yam, finger yams, yam that grow on the vine. And uh, most of the yams are on the ground, white yam. And it's, it's a staple in Grenada. And most of the yams were introduced actually from Africa um, during slavery. And the reason was yam is so nutritious. It was supposed to increase the fecundity of men, so they would produce more slave children. Uh, okay. That was one of the reasons why it was introduced. But we know now too that it is one of the, in Jamaica, it is one of the stable of Usain Bolt. It is yams that make him run so well among the foods he eat. So we also have sweet potatoes, like what you have, and we have them in different colors. The white, when they cook, they're the one that, those that remain white, those that we now have the purple one too, and of course the yellow one and the blue ones. And they come in a variety of um, sweetness from which you could do a variety of dishes, um, similarly like you do, you know, um, sweet potato pie. A popular thing in Grenada is sweet potato pudding. It is, it's a characteristic um, um, plate of Grenada. Dashin, Colocasia escalenta is an underground um, corn, which is very delicious when cooked. But interestingly, we also use the leaf as a vegetable and it is called kalalu. And it is supposed to be very rich in iron, okay? And one of the tricks is, if you're cooking kalalu as a soup or as a side dish, you should also drink a citrus drink with it so that you release, you get maximum iron from that vegetable. Tanya is also an underground root, which is very delicious and very nutritious, rich in fibers, mineral, starches, cassava, uh, maniot, also known as yucca. And of course, in the banana series, there are three major banana plants that we use. There is the banana, which you will be familiar with, which you can eat um, ripe, the doles and the chiquitas. But we also uh, cook a lot of green banana as a staple. And especially banana, as you see later on, banana with salt fish. Salt fish, tomatoes, and vegetables is a popular staple and apparently actually a sustaining breakfast meal. Planted is a less sweeter version of the banana, 
and it is used for making chips and you could cook it to make fufu and various dishes and a, 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 a part, um, fried plantain is very popular as a Grenadian dish. Blugger is also in the banana family, but it is most starchy. When ripe, it gets sweet, but never as sweet as banana. So it is usually cooked as a staple for the starch. So used in soups, etc. Pigeon pea. And I see I'm Cajun, Kajanas Kajan. That's a scientific name, yes. Very popular in Grenada around Christmas time. And one of the standouts is pea soup, green pea soup. <laughs> Very popular in which you add a lot of spices like cloves and cinnamon. So the flavor is enhanced dramatically. And I think um, Grenadian pea soup is, is a characteristic of Grenadian dining. Um, you could also use um, pigeon pea and rice. So you could use it as the green peas in particular and also cooked with rice. So it's a very wonderful dish. Coconuts, cocos nucifera, is used for making coconut oil with which we cook, but, but you also make the coconut cream, which is added to lots of dishes. If you're cooking rice, you add coconut cream. If you're cooking vegetables, you add coconut cream. And especially in a national dish, the oil dung, which is made from bread food, you must have coconut cream. So bread food, very popular. Um, and it's the, um, the nexus of a national dish. Our national dish is bread food and it is called oil dung. I'll speak about it a little more later. And pumpkin. So these are some of the major um, local produce that we use as food. Next. Um, the major vegetables, popular lettuce, cabbage, pak choy, kale, amaranth. Amaranth is usually grows wild, both in extent, and it is used for making spinach. It's, it's, it's like a, it's used as a spinach. Very rich in fibers, very rich in iron, very popular, yeah. It is even more popular in Jamaica and Trinidad, where they call it Kalaloo, but we call it Baji or Zepina here. And our Kalaloo is the dashing leaf, as I mentioned before. Spinach, Malabar spinach, dashing leaf, Moringa, is very popular here now. Um, uh, Moringa oleifera, the plant, parsley, celery, and okra. We cook with a lot of okra, particularly when we are cooking kuku, which is a popular corn dish. You must have, you know, cocoa adds that slimy texture to the fish, which makes the kuku more delectable because it slips down the throat much more easily when it's in, in, in dust with okra. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> Feel free, uh, maybe, if you have any questions as I go along, I'm prepared to answer them, to elaborate. You know, if there's anything that challenges you, I'm prepared to elaborate, okay? Um, so I haven't given you some of the local um, food products or food produce, I now introduce you to our spices. And our most popular spice from which we have gotten the name Isles of Spice is the nutmeg. But from the nutmeg plant, we get two spices, nutmeg and mace. And the scientific name is Myristica fragrance. And here I want to give a little story. It is interesting sometimes when you have a consultant from outside your country who do not know the details of your produce and wants to give advice in their report. There was a consultant once who didn't visit Grenada, saw the reports on the productivity of nutmeg and mace. He did not know that nutmeg and mace comes from the same fruit, okay, as I showed you on the slide, as I showed you, yes. So in his report, since mace was fetching a higher price, 
in his recommendations, he wrote, grow more maize. <laughs> but you only get maize by growing nutmeg. <laughs> but his recommendation was grow more maize. And that was one of his sterling recommendations to Grenada to increase your income. So you see sometimes consultants not having knowledge, actual knowledge here, giving advice. I always um, you know, enjoy that, uh, that story. One of the other popular spice is cinnamon. And we have the true cinnamon, cinnamon verum. Usually in the States, the cinnamon you use is not the true, you use cassia, cassia cinnamon, which is quite different to the cinnamon we have. Ourselves in Sri Lanka tend to produce the true cinnamon. But this is the true cinnamon, and from the Latin, cinnamon verum, which is distinct from cassia. Um, and cinnamon is a bark. It's from the bark of the cinnamon tree. And you know it's multiple uses, in, particularly, in particular in pumpkin pies. Um, there was a, there, I met a lady from Canada whose husband came down after Ivan to help with the restoration. And he took back to his wife, Grenadian cinnamon. And she said from that day, she had never used any other cinnamon but Grenadian cinnamon in her pumpkin pie. She swears by Grenadian cinnamon in her pumpkin pie. And she would always have it. You have to get her Grenadian cinnamon for her pumpkin pie. Cloves is the other very popular spice that we cultivate. And remember, clove is the flower bud. You cannot let, you have to harvest it before the flower buds open. If the flower buds open, it is no longer aromatic and it is called mother of clove. It really goes to the fruit and you really cannot use it as a spice. Pimento, all spice. That is what um, Jamaica is famous for, pimento. Yeah. And you know, you must have pimento if you're doing any jerk, any jerk product, you must have pimento. Um, and it's the fruit of the spice from the tree. Bay leaf. And here I want to give a clarification. When you are using bay leaf, you will have to make clear in a recipe whether you are using European bay leaf or West Indian bay leaf. Our West Indian bay leaf is quite different from the European bay leaf. Our West Indian bay leaf is pimenta racemosa. European bay leaf is Laura nobilis. So it's a laurel. So it must be distinct in your, especially in your recipes. If you are using West Indian bay leaf, it's quite different. And we have different varieties of bay leaf. It is particularly tasty in porridges and like with oatmeal. And um, from it, you can get bay oil which is then used to make splashes and, and um, especially um, for men and things like that. Bay oil is used in a splashes. So I want you to be quite clear from henceforth that there are different types of bay leaf and West Indian bay leaf is distinct and different from European bay, which is laurel. Another spice we have. Excuse me, I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. Um, about cinnamon? Yes. Um, I know there are several different types of cinnamon, true cinnamon, not true cinnamon, and yes. different varieties. What is the benefit or the major difference in true cinnamon versus any of the others? Okay. The true cinnamon, the chemical composition would be different. The true cinnamon is very rich in cinnamon aldehyde, you know, which gives it that particular flavor that particular kick. You find in the other cinema like cassia, it is not as distinct. As a matter of fact, um, Sri Lanka has taken some of the other cinnamon producers to the world court saying that since it is not true cinnamon, 
when you use it in cake and burn and biscuits, you shouldn't say it's a cinnamon biscuit because it is not true cinnamon. I don't know what stage you're at now with this thing here. But um, apart from cinnamon also has beneficial medicinal purposes. And they are now finding out that research is showing that it is helping people with diabetes type B. Type B diabetes, drinking cinnamon has afforded some alleviation and some assistance. And you find that the smell, the aroma is distinctive. So you would have to get from it. The other thing is that the cassia, the non-true cinnamon, it has a reddish tint. It is not a straight brown, and you know, as this particular one. So you'll be able to identify it. And the curls tend to be smaller. They're more like pencil shape. So those are some of the distinctions. Thank you. Yes. No I problem. At all. Go, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Um, this is a so you know, I, I I think I told some of you all that he's that uh, Dr. Marcel is also my uncle. But I have a quick question because I remember Uncle Jan yeah. telling my telling Daddy about amaranth and how amaranth was banned in Guyana. Um, I wanted to know just about if you knew anything about that, and because I, I heard that he said that the British banned um, amaranth from. Um, from being used in Guyana. And I just wondered if you knew anything about that. Well, the amaranth, there are different species of amaranth. The amaranth he was speaking about was the one that was used in historic times by the Incas and the Aztecs. That was one of their major foods. But you know, the colonizers wanted to be so dominant and they wanted you to use more wheat and things like that. So they prevented you from growing what would have been a very nutritious food, which was the, almost the food of the gods in Inca and Aztec um, civilizations. So, so that is the story that goes behind that. Um, the amaranth we use in Grenada though is slightly different in that we are more using the leaves as a spinach. It does not produce the proliferation of seeds as the amaranth that, is, that was found in Mexico, you know, they still grows a lot in Mexico, use. So we more use it for the, 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 the leaves more so than the seeds. So that's the background to that story. Was the whole um, phenomena of colonization. We make you um, grow what we want. And that is one of the problems too that, um, I'll give you an example with, um, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka used to be self-sufficient in food, especially with growing almost all the rice they need. But when the British went in, they wanted them to grow more cinnamon and cocoa to export to Britain. And they actually lost most of the rice cultivation and have to started to import rice. They have to import rice as a staple. So that is, that's the kind, that's, that is how it tends to happen. Something similar happened in Haiti too, but we wouldn't get there today. <laughs> we'll speak about that another time. And I'm sure you're going to get into it also. Thank you for answering both of our questions. And I'm sure you're going to get into the medicinal purposes of nutmeg later. But I Yes, don't... I'm going to do that. Yes, in the, in the other slide. Yes, yes. So I said, I want you to uh, now be familiarized with the distinct difference between our cinema. No, go back to the... Please return, yes. Our distinct, yeah, go, go back, yes. Yes, thank you. To the um, distinct um, difference between our cinema, true cinema and cassia. Um, Sapat, it's a spice that is shaped as a boat, okay? We use the seed. It is not very popular. It is not exported, but used a lot locally in cakes. You know, you grate the seed, the seed which is found inside, you know, the kernel which is found inside the seed, and it is used in cakes to give you a fantastic flavor. It's not very popular. The fruit grows a lot in Cuba, and they also eat the fruit. It's a nice, big, sap, the sap, sapodilla shaped fruit, and the flesh has a kind of golden brown, golden color. 
and it is very edible. And finally, the curry plant, which was more, which more used more used a lot by the Indian population, yes, is one of the popular spices used in lots of Indian dishes and also making Indian curries and, and other, other recipes. The curry plant, and I give you the name here for people maybe who are not familiar with it, you can um, Google it and become familiar. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, so these spices are the spices that are not trees. I divided up into spices that grows on trees. And then, this, yeah. so ginger is the right. And lots of times people say ginger root, but what we use as the spice is not the root, is the underground stem, the rhizome. The roots are little tiny offshoots from the rhizome. So technically, botanically, we should not say ginger root. It's ginger rhizome or the underground stem that we use as the spice. Similarly with um, turmeric. Turmeric. And um, all I did yesterday was took a drive up to my garden and harvested all these things. You know, these are these were all there. <laughs> uh, so this is turmeric. In Grenada, we have corrupted it a little bit. So you'll hear they call it saffron. And a lot of people are confused with genuine saffron because saffron, you know, grows more to the Middle East and in Spain and places like that. That's a genuine saffron, coco sativa, which is the stamens of the flower. Whereas turmeric, curcuma longa, is the underground stem or the rhizome. And you know that saffron is very hot now in the news. Um, saffron is found in all curries because that's what gives curries their color. It is also used for coloring certain cheeses and certain butters and margarine. Um, it is cooked. Um, well, these days they say it is very helpful for helping with inflammation um, and as a brain food for Alzheimer's. And in Grenada, one of the popular use is uh, if one comes down with a sprain, you have twisted an ankle. Um, in ancient times, and even now, before going to the doctor, your grandmother would get some of this, would get a scrubbing brush or a corn hooks, rub the area vigorously, pump some saffron and tie it on. And usually it brings down the inflammation. It's, and scientific tests now have shown that it has anti-inflammatory properties. And that's one of, this, one of its big, big uses internationally, used popularly in India for that. It also has antifungal properties. Um, the ladies in India, when they go into the rice field, since they go bare feet, they don their toes and their feet with the saffron and it prevents fungal infection of their, of their feet. Also, it is used for dyeing it's in places like Thailand and thing. The robes of the monk is dyed from saffron. So there are multiple uses from the saffron and used extensively in cooking. Um, vanilla. Anna has oh, a excuse me. Go ahead. Um, when you're just talking, what you were just talking about, uh, when you yes. say saffron, were you talking about turmeric or were you talking turmeric, about? I was speaking about saffron. turmeric. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, nice. but this, Thank you. This I was Turmeric is used to give that saffron color of the robes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you. Yes, so I was speaking about turmeric. We cannot grow saffron, in the true saffron, crocus saffron in Grenada, because it is more or less endemic to the Mediterranean countries, you know, the south of Spain, Italy, places like Iran, et cetera. All these areas grow saffron. Yeah, but we, like in the tropics, just like India and other countries, we grow Turmeric. Vanilla. Well, that is one of my favorite because I'm a vanilla farmer. And these are some of my vanilla beans. Okay. And vanilla is a very touchy 
and sensitive spice to deal with. Only in Mexico, there is the insect that pollinates vanilla. So in every other country where it's grown, it has to be hand pollinated. And it's an orchid. And the flower only opens in the morning. So by noon, the flower closes and you have missed it. So you have to be there in the morning and very meticulously opening the flower, using a toothpick and very gently using press of the fingers to press the pollen onto the stigma here yeah, for the plant to be fertilized. The good thing about it is it responds immediately. If you were successful, the flower does not fade and dry up. If you are not, the flower fades. So you know that your fertilization or your pollination technique was futile. So it has to be hand pollinated and you have to go from flower to flower. And even more tedious is on a bunch of flowers, it opens only one flower at a time. So it may carry 15 flowers, but open one flower every day. So you have to be there every morning to pollinate it, okay? So it, it is very tedious. Having pollinated vanilla, it takes about seven months before it produces the fruits, the bean-shaped fruit. There too, you have to involve in the curing process. The curing process of vanilla is also very tedious. You have to treat it as a baby. Having harvested the green fruits, green colored fruits, you have to wrap it up in a blanket for two nights for it to kind of ferment. A thick blanket. Then you open it and bring it out in the sun for six hours. Then put it in the shade for two hours. And then you bring it inside in a cooler for the night to sleep. And you repeat the process for a number of days. That is the only way vanilla cures to give you that dramatic scent and flavor. You cannot hasten the process. It takes about a whole month of drying and curing to give you that dramatic vanilla flavor. That's why vanilla is the most expensive spice on the planet. Um, why one has to go through that TCS process is a chemical change has taken place. One of the substances is found in the skin of the vanilla and the other substance is in the seed, which is in the center of the vanilla. So there has to be a migration of a substance from the outer skin to the inner seeds to produce vanillin, which is a substance that gives you that dramatic taste and smell of vanilla, as you know in vanilla ice cream and all vanilla products. And that is true, genuine vanilla. Okay? So apart from doing the beans, I also do the vanilla extract. So I make my own vanilla essence. Um, Dr. G's all natural pure vanilla extract. <laughs> so I go through the entire process. I plant the plant, I grow it, I pollinate it, I cure it, and I produce the products. <laughs> so that is vanilla, <laughs> vanilla platifolia. Any questions or? <laughs> Peppers. Well, we do a lot of peppers, especially the hot peppers. Um, and they are used uh, in, in pepper sauce. Uh, pepper sauce is a very popular product in Grenada. For the people who like hot tasting things, we produce some very hot pepper sauce. Uh, uh, because we have varieties of pepper like the Scotch bonnet, you know, which has a very high um, Scotch value. Yeah, black pepper. We also grow some black pepper. You know, black pepper is also a vine. I'll show you pictures of it later on. And we do small amounts of cardamom. You know, cardamom is a particular spice, particularly grown in India, but I think Central America is doing some now. And it's uh, particularly used by the Arabs in their coffee and other tea preparations. We do a small amount in Grenada. Um, but cardamom particularly needs very high elevation. 
So we find that a yield here would be very small. Cardamom is best grown in the mountains. And uh, we don't have uh, that type of mountain. Um, we're talking about mountains that may be as much as 5,000, 6,000 feet. That's the kind of elevation at which cardamom produces better. So thank you for the non-tree spices and we move on. I want to introduce you. We have a variety of fruits in Grenada. And from these fruits, we make a number of products like juices, drinks, jams, jellies, dried fruits, etc. So I sort of listed the variety of fruits we have just for your general information and you could check on them. So we have lots of uh, mangoes, different mangoes. And the mangoes we have here, the varieties would be quite different from what you see in your supermarket. We have a large variety of mangoes. And um, apart from mango being a delicious fruit, you know it is very rich in carotenoids, anti-cancer, and it is also classified as uh, cosmeceuticals. Eaten mangoes is very good for making the skin, particularly of the ladies, very subtle. So you don't have to use skin lotion and skin cream if you enjoy lots of mango. The mango is classified as a cosmeceutical. Avocado. You are familiar with avocado, but I want to show you the variety of avocado we grow in Grenada. This is how our avocado looks. This is a medium-sized avocado in Grenada. I harvested this yesterday. So we do, we are not with this, uh, this small little Mexican avocado that you're accustomed with. This, <laughs> this avocado could feed a family. <laughs> when you begin to slice it, it could feed a family. So this is from one of my, I do have an avocado orchard. Yeah. And I have a varieties of avocado. Yeah. And this is about um, the sort of um, the average size. Some can even get bigger. So one avocado sometimes could weigh three pounds. So I thought I would have just showed you, yes, the difference. When you go to the supermarket, you see these tiny little things here. <laughs> For those, we don't, we, um, we grow very little of the hash in Grenada, very little. Maybe just one or two farmers, yes. But we indulge in the different varieties. So any question on avocado? <laughs> well, you know, it is boasted as uh, being uh, a superfood. You can get every, almost everything from your avocado your vitamins, your minerals, your fibers, your, your sugars, uh, some starches, the oils, and the oils are beneficial oil, not cholesterol containing, you know? So avocado is indeed a superfood and could be, you know, used in lots of different ways, even in um, smoothies and punches, um, even avocado ice cream is one of the things that is tried, you know? And of course, with your salads, so multiple uses, uh, too much to mention, and I guess maybe you will know about it, and maybe have tried some of those in the past, and maybe is willing to try some new ones in the future. Um, coconuts. What is very popular here is the coconut drinking the water of the young coconuts. It is called coconut water. It's very popular and it's sold all over the country. So now it's a small, popular small business. And you know that this coconut water is one of the best rehydrating fluids. You get almost all the minerals you need from coconut water. So for athletes, as a matter of fact, it could also be put, placed directly as an IV into your blood if there isn't, um, if there isn't um, you know, IV drops to give a patient. You could put coconut water directly in the blood and the person would survive. Um, so it is highly nutritious, uh, very available, and a powerful rehydrator, very good for athletes and people who are working out, and especially people recovering maybe from diarrhea. You know, you replenish yourself with, with coconut, fresh coconut water. It's, it's a growing business in Grenada and in the region. Um, I would advise it is much better 
to use it straight from the fruit than using the bottled one. The bottled coconut water usually have preservatives and we are finding out too sometimes that people maybe add a little sugar to it, you know, to sweeten it a little so you don't get the, the natural coconut water. It is best for them to have the coconut, you see them peel it and cut it in front of you and you get it straight from the, the nut, okay? So coconut's very popular as a fruit here. Um, and of course the dry coconut from which you can make the oil and you make the cream. And also from the coconut, you make lots of snacks, you know, uh, like coconut tart, coconut tart, coconut sugar cake, um, lots, lots of snack products. I, I guess uh, you may be familiar with some of these products. Um, there are lots of coconut based products here. Well, bananas, I don't have to say much about banana again, it's something you're familiar with. But I can introduce you actually, um, there's a lecture I do on banana, which I call a Gtensive banana lecture, where I can take banana, a stool of banana, and teach almost every subject, almost every subject. I can do the botany, the chemistry, the food technology, the medicinal properties. I can even do the politics. A stool of banana shows us that there should be successions. There are young ones coming up to take over so that as you get older in politics, you should know that there are young ones coming up to take over. That is um, endemic in, this, in a stool of banana. So banana all and um, the medicinal properties of banana is very, 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 very prolific. Um, you know, um, the juice from the leaf could be used as an antiseptic, behaving just as they're told, you know, to clean wounds and things like that. But um, today the lecture is not so much about medicinal, so I wouldn't really go there. And the products we can make from banana are very extensive. I mean, we are just beginning to, to learn the extent of the products we can do from banana. Um, in um, the Philippines, there's a lady using the ripe banana peel to make a biscuit. You could convert the peel into something like raisin or currants and use it to make cakes. It is high potential. And um, so apart from the fries, you know, um, and snacks that you can make from banana, banana ice cream, banana smoothie, et cetera. There are literally hundreds of recipes. One of the things I just want to mention to, I don't know if you all have come across it, is doing reverse engineering. The banana plant stands up because it is filled with water. There you go. So reverse engineering. Since banana plant hold a lot of water, if we can dry the fibers, we could use the fibers to attract water. And in Africa and um, India now, they are using the fibers of banana to make sanitary napkins for ladies, particularly school girls. And it is called banana pads. <laughs> and it is very popular and it has made a difference in the social life of the school girls. So Fuya girls miss school because you could actually make these sanitary napkins in the village. If you don't have the money to buy the expensive brand names, you could make it in the village. So I thought I'll just mention that on the side, reverse okay. engineering. Um, amazing, I just had to say that. That's amazing that they would make sanitary pads out of banana peels, that's amazing. Yeah, banana, no, this is the banana, um, the fibers. The fibers. Gotcha. The fibers, yeah, because the fibers pull a lot of water. Yeah, mm -hmm. the fibers of the, of the stock, of the stock, yeah. There's also a growing industry in making cloth too, you know. Banana fiber cloth. And they are now using it in culture in some places, small in Grenada, to make the rope and you can make banana slippers, banana handbags from the fibers. So you're using it, you know. So it's, it's prolific. Uh, it's a plant that has many, many uses. And I'll give you one little use to round off. In times of disaster, our elderly population realize if a hurricane is coming, the banana stool is a safe place. You could put some of your precious things. So they will wrap up their things in plastic bags and hide it in a banana stool. Because you see the banana stool is not woody. So even if it falls, it wouldn't break and damage. And if no water pass, you could just go to the stool and retrieve your items. So that was one of the safe places during disaster where people hid some of this stuff. So the story could go on and on. So you see there are diverse messages 
that could come from a banana. So the peel also, um, it, the, the banana is a very good um, germinator. If you want to grow pepper in your backyard and you have pepper seeds, you could just slice a ripe banana, put the seeds in the banana, and new plants would grow and take your plants and plant it in your backyard. As simple as that. <laughs> it is idea. Very, um, it, 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 it nourishes plants very. If you want to make your tomato sweeter, put some banana peel under the root when you're planted it, and the tomato would be sweeter and <laughs> more nutritious. Those are just some little tidbits from banana. Well, watermelon, I would not delve much in that because uh, it's similar use to the uh, in your area. Cantaloupe, similarly. Soursop. I don't know how familiar you all are with soursop. I'm sorry I didn't have a fruit to show, but you could Google it maybe. Uh, it's a very popular fruit here. The, the juice is nice, creamy white, and you could use it for making ice cream, um, smoothies, and other products. It has now been boasted that the soursop fruit also has, as well as the leaves, has very high anti-cancer properties. And so that is one of the big uses now. And incidentally, for me to boast a little bit, Grenada is the only country that could export sursa to the United States without any regulations. We do not have to treat our sursa with any um, antifungal property. It is safe for the Grenadian salsa to enter the United States. We have passed the test. So there's a very good trade between Grenada. So all the other islands have to treat their salsa. They have to wash it and bathe it, et cetera, before they can send it to the United States. So that is a, 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 an exporting advantage that we have in that our salsa could go directly to the United States. Um, guavas, I guess you're familiar with guavas, rich in vitamin C, golden apples, is one of the popular fruits here too, from which you could make stews, jams, jellies, juices, and even um, pickles, and anchar, and kuchela. And, um, and if you're into rasta type foods or veggie, like things like doing a vegetable roti with no meat, you could use them curry mango and curry golden apple as your meat substitute. And it's very, very tasty. Um, West Indian cherry. West Indian cherry is supposed to be one of the fruits with the highest content of vitamin C. So that is one of the fruits that we have here in abundance. And it's used a lot for making juices and drinks. West Indian cherry. Let us continue quickly. We'll go through the fruits. The next slide. Sapodillos, plums, passion fruit. Uh, granadilla, um, and the citruses, sweet orange, sour orange, limes, grapefruit, mandarin, lemon. <laughs> so there are a whole host of citrus that we grow. Uh, you could Google maybe and you'll become more familiar with these, uh, these citruses because they all have different uses. Well, you know, oranges. One of the problem I had, or you would have, you know, you know, when you were going to school in your preschool, they tell you that the color orange is orange, okay? You're familiar in the United States with seeing orange as orange. In Grenada, our orange never gets orange. Our orange remains green. Okay. So our mature orange remains green. So we never understood the color orange for orange. It's only when you travel or you see it, you realize that orange has an orange color. Our orange is always green. So um, lots of visitors, if you were to offer them an orange here, they would think that it is immature, <laughs> you know, yes. But you peel it for them and they realize it's mature. So our oranges here, our mature oranges are green on the outside, green on the peels. And a beautiful tea. Usually we save that green orange peel. So in most kitchen, in most households, in the kitchen, you'll see strands of orange peels hanging. And that is safe to make orange peel tea. Orange peel tea is a very invigorating tea that you could use, you know, if you're feeling chilly and things like that. And it's very good um, 
for, for gas, you know, if the stomach, if you feel gassy or gaseous in the stomach, you drink your hot orange peel tea. Similarly, cinnamon does that. So like if you haven't eaten on time and your stomach is filled with gas, we say that you can break the gas by drinking orange peel tea or hot cinnamon tea. So those are some of the uh, digestive aids. And a popular one is um, Thai lime or coffee fig. Um, really, it's um, citrus hystrix. In Thailand and the Far East, they use the leaves a lot in cooking. It gives the, the food a particular flavor. The fruit itself is citrus, very acidic. Um, in Grenada, the rind, the skin of the fruit is used a lot in cakes. It gives cakes a particular um, citrusy flavor. Let us go ahead. Any questions? Uh, well, papaw, pineapples, mammy apple, tamarind. Tamarind or tamarind is a fruit that has an acidic type flavor, which is particularly good for if you're doing a, a recipe that is salt and sweet. So salt and sweet or acid and, or sour and sweet. Sour and sweet, you can use tamarind because you get that that flavor from using the, the, the ripe fruits of tamarind. Sorrel, hibiscus sabdarifa, um, and particularly around Christmas time. This is used for making a wonderful beverage. And the, um, the sorrel, this is what it looks like. And it's the calyx of the fruit. It is sometimes called Jamaica sorrel, but it is grown throughout the Caribbean and we grow it also grown a lot in North Africa. Okay. It has a beautiful acidic, sweetly acidic taste. It mimics cranberry and it has some of the medicinal properties of cranberry. It's particularly used at Christmas time. And when you make the drink, And here I show you, this is how it looks. And it is rich in spices. Once you boil your sorrel, you put in cinnamon, cloves, ginger, bay leaf, and maybe a pinch of nutmeg. So that is always in your sorrel drink. Yes, it is never a straight food. So the flavor, I would say the flavor is dynamic. Sorry, I can't share it with you. But when you come, <laughs> when you come, I'll make sure that you have genuine sorrel drink. It's a big thing at Christmas time. Almost all households would have their sorrel. Some people let it ferment a little bit to give you a sort of winey taste. But it is a beautiful, a beautiful drink. I'll have this later. <laughs> Quick question. Oh, hello. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was wondering when you all drink a uh, sorrel, do you always drink it cold or do you heat it up? Use it both ways. It is more popular in the islands. It is more popular cold. Yeah. I more guess it doesn't get very cold there. <laughs> yes, in Europe, and I guess in the rest in place, yeah. It is used as a hot drink and especially with cinnamon. So you make a toddy. Sorrel makes a beautiful toddy to give you that bounce early in the morning when outside is chilly and damp. A hot sorrel drink bounces you back. Actually, in the European Commission on Herbs, it is classified as a UTC, a uterine tract cleanser. It, is a, it has very good diuretic property. It flushes the kidneys beautifully. That's one of the properties it has. So it, is, it has very beautiful death. So it actually could help um, diabetic patients and also people maybe with hypertension because it flushes the kidneys. It causes you to pass a lot of fluid when you drink plenty sorrel. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. No problem at all. French cashew, that's another fruit we have. Um, you can check them out, the, the cashew nut. Um, you are more familiar with the nuts, using as the nuts. Yeah. 
But the fruit itself, well, it's a false fruit because the nut is actually the fruit. And under the nut is a false fruit, is a, is a part of the flower that has developed into a fruit looking object. And that fruit is very juicy. And it is used for making drinks, stews. It has very good anti-diarrheal property. So like if you're in the garden and you are struck with a bout of diarrhea, you just need to get onto some of these fruits. And as you drink, as you suck it, it tends to have a binding property. Yes, and it would help your diarrhea. Another thing, it is one of the fruits that could be used for a non-meat hamburger. You juice it and you cut it up and you season it and you could use it just as a hamburger meat. You get here, depending on the seasonings you use, you get that um, you know wonderful taste. Um, and of course you have carambola, which is called five fingers. I guess you're familiar with it. Um, and then condition is related to carambola, but we call it one finger. It is much more acidic than the carambola, but you have some sweet carambola and sour ones. The one finger or condition is used a lot in making pickles and sauces. Like, you know, it is used a lot in, um, not for drinks as well, because it's very acidic, but it is used in drinks and pepper sauce and sauces. One of the property it has though, is that in the garden, you could use it as a natural hand cleanser. It actually removes stains from your hand and also removes stains from clothing. So that is some of its additional use. Next, please. <laughs> okay. You might have to... Um, I don't know if you could read. I think the, the print is very small, if you could elaborate it. But maybe I'll mention it because I have it written out. Um, some popular local dishes. Oil down. That is our national dish. And it is made from, the basis of oil dung is bread food. Bread food, banana, vegetables, carrots, dashing leaf, and coconut milk. You must have coconut milk. And you have to cook that coconut milk until it gets gray in the pot. Mm. And oil dung is a kind of social food. Usually, a family never cook oil dung for themselves. Oil dung is always shared. You always have to give, when you cook oil dung, you always have to give the neighbor or invite people to share your oil dung. And it's one of the foods that men like cooking. And usually, if you have a beach line or a river line, the men cook an oil dung. And you should see the massive pots. We're talking about here, some gigantic pots. <laughs> that you, you, you cook an oil dung that could feed about 20 or 30 persons. <laughs> and the men do the cooking. And then you dash in all kinds of meat. Chicken, turkey, um, um, pig, um, pig tail, pig snout, <laughs> all kinds of meats in it, you know? Yeah. Some people don't, or even salted fish. Some people don't like it with the meat. Some people, you could do a veggie oil down. Yeah. So that's our national dish. I hope someday you can all taste it because it's nutritious, it is tasty, and it is very social because it is shared. It's like a community community pot. The other one is pilau. Um, pilau is like a one pot where if you have lots of meat and beans remaining from what you had cooked the day before, you decide to throw it into your rice. You color it and you burn your color, your sugar coloring. You make everything nice and brown. So it's rice, meat, beans, etc. And it's very popular because it's a quick, what we call a quick one pot which could serve you with your little pieces of meat. Sometimes you have to search for the pieces of meat, but never mind. The rice is nice and brown and very tasty and also very spicy, well seasoned. Cuckoo. Cuckoo is one of the dishes we made from corn. It's, I think we inherited this from the African tradition. So it's ground corn and you cook it again with coconut milk. But cooking cuckoo is, is laborious. Because for it to cook properly, you have to stir it with a wooden pallet continuously until it is cooked. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's, it's a beautiful meal, very sustaining. And the nice thing about it is that what remains, you could prepare fried cuckoo in the morning. So you, you could prepare cuckoo chips. And also you could prepare cuckoo tea by mixing it with milk. There is also an overhang on a, a, a slight change to the recipe where you cook cuckoo, corn and peas in one pot. And you call it cuckoo poa, you know, because poa in patois is peas, okay? Our next popular dish is provision. And provision and saltfish. <laughs> That's very popular among locals. So yam, tanya, dasheen, banana, blubber, etc. is steamed. And then you prepare saltfish or, or, or corned fish with um, carrots, tomatoes, cucumber, lettuce. And that is your meal. It's, it's usually sometimes served at breakfast time. Or a lot when people are laboring in the field, doing hard work, you give them that sustenance food. Because when you have a good meal of provision, you could work for the entire day. Rice and peas, especially the pigeon peas is a popular local dish. Um, fish broth. We call it fish broth as distinct from our, in your recipes, you call a, a broth is usually like maybe um, um, like a, a, a dressing that you would add or things you would add. To. But our broth is really a soup. <laughs> yeah. So fish broth is really a fish soup where you put in the fish, well seasoned, herbs, spices, lots of fish, and uh, banana, and you will make some dumplings from flour, uh, tanya dashing potato, and that's the fish broth. It is supposed to be one of the very powerful nourishing meals that is used in Grenada. As a matter of fact, many years ago, a study was done, and it was shown in that one of the towns called the fishing tongue of Grenada, that the meal there used by the young people was one of the healthiest meals, you know, in the region. And it was mainly of fish. You know, for a small population, we have gotten, out of a population of 100,000, we have gotten a gold medal at the Olympics in the 400 meters. And that gentleman has come from the fishing village and he grew up on fish broth. <laughs> yeah, fish broth was his, Made me yeah. lots of fish waters. So that's how we, we, we call it. Okay. Go ahead, Anna. Yes. A question? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you incorporate banana into the fish uh, yeah, broth. The, the green, green banana. Green bananas. Oh, okay. So do you just you just cut it into pieces kind of it, or, or do you cut it into uh, pieces, blend yes. it? Yes. Oh, okay. No, you don't blend it, just cut it into pieces. Yeah, it sounds like almost like plantain, the way that yeah, we plant, use plantain. You can do, do it with plantain too, and you can do it with blugger. Yeah. Nice, thank you. And, and, and you know, there's an easy way to peel banana. How? And plantain. You just make one with your knife. You uh -huh. just run it down the side, and uh -huh. the peel lifts. Up, then the peel lifts off. You know. <laughs> yeah, we do that. We do. Uh, we do three incisions in my family. We do one. Uh, one and then another and another and then we peel it in sections. Yes, okay. We do one incision and we peel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was interesting that I was looking at um, in India, in a chip factory. They were actually scraping it to peel it, and I said that was so labor intensive. They had these ladies sitting and scraping off the peel, <laughs> which I thought was very inefficient and labor intensive, you know. But I guess different cultures learn different <laughs> techniques. Yes. Yes. So yes. Yeah, so we put the green, the green, the green banana, in your in your fish broth. Very nourishing, very nourishing, and very sustaining. Do y'all ever eat a banana, like the the ripe banana, with your food on the side? I'm just curious because I've seen that in other Caribbean country, uh, countries. Yes. Yeah, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do, and especially sometimes as a dessert. Uh huh. You know, banana with honey. Mm -hmm. or, or, or banana flambe, where mm -hmm. you put the alcohol on the banana and light it. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. So that's one of the, uh, yeah. But usually, um, as children and young ones, we like a banana straight. And especially going into the countryside, 
and going into the banana field and finding ripe. You know, um, once you enter the banana field, your nose directs you to ripe bananas. <laughs> and you could actually see them on the bunches. So you hasten to the bunch and help yourself with bananas straight in the field. That is, the, that is one of the preferred ways of using um, the ripe bananas. That makes me think, though, of, you know, of, of how old um, flambeing bananas in the Caribbean is, you know, because yeah. in New Orleans, we have bananas foster, right? Yeah. So I'm just wondering how old is, you know, the tradition of flambeing bananas? I mean, but that's another topic that we can. Yes, yes, yes. And when, when you come. <laughs> yes, when we, when, when we come. <laughs> That's the plan. Yes, so, 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 that, so that's how that, that's how we do it. Yes, okay. and banana make banana makes very um, it makes very nice ice cream too, um, and then you know you could use it um, in in in, in cakes and things like that too. You know the dry banana the, um, if you make um dry banana, the the, 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 dry, the dried banana, and the planting chips. You know there are multiple uses. Apparently, you could think of banana uses. As your imagination unfold, you could prepare almost whatever you want with it, because you could also crush it and make a nice both the ripe banana and the green banana as a baby feed. It's very nice as a for, for toddlers and things like that. Yeah, because you know you could make it into a, a mash, and you could use it as a as a baby feed. So there's lots of potential. Okay, manage water. <laughs> it is that is one of the um, uh, it's the kind of thing that goes like under the counter manish water is usually prepared by the men and it's supposed to be a sexual booster so what they normally use is the the um, testicles of the animal the testicles of the cow or the testicles of the goat and that is usually called manish water, particularly a man's drink. But um, there is some scientific truth to it, and it's not only anecdotal. In the testicles accumulate lots of minerals like zinc and selenium. And zinc and selenium are very good for the men. <laughs> yes. So that is how they are. Maybe without even knowing the chemistry and the biology, manish water has become established as a popular drink. So in some restaurants and in the village and in the shop or when you're doing a cook among the men you a weekend or on a holiday a vacation day you must have some manish water that's one of the one of the recipes on the menu <laughs> kalalu soup again made from the dashing leaf and um, pigeon pea soup that is one of the i think one of the tastiest soups you could the green peas the kajanas the pigeon pea soup and um Cow heel soup. We use the cow heel especially to do a soup on Saturdays. Saturday in Grenada seems to be a soup day. And cow heel soup on Saturday is very, very peculiar. I know different states and everything have their, they also their soup days. So all the sulfur sauce, as I mentioned, saltfish um, or codfish or cornfish with um, tomato, lettuce, kale, carrots, etc. And you find it's one of the um, the dishes I respect our forefathers or grandparents and things for. Because in combining that dish, they give you a kind of very balanced meal, the cells, because you're getting your vegetables. So you're getting your fibers. You're getting a little bit of proteins. You're getting your trace minerals and things. Like that. You're getting your carotenoids and things like that. And maybe without them knowing the chemistry, they had combined a very interesting um, meal, which is the sauce, which you could use with bread, but oftentimes use it for use with yam or use with um, bananas, green bananas and things like that. Um, the next one is um, pig trotter sauce. I guess that's something you, you use the trotters of the pig and you make a sauce. Oh, by the way, you could use the green banana to make a vegetarian sauce that tastes just like if it has meat. If you use the right type of seasonings like sage, thyme, onion, garlic, um, celery, parsley, cucumbers and things like that, it comes out tasting 
just as with green bananas. And it looks like if it's a meat dish, but it is green bananas with the right seasonings. And it tastes like if it's a meat dish. The other popular one in Grenada is conch. We call it lambi. You know, you're all are familiar with the name as conch. You know conch, the conch? Yes, we know, yes. Okay, but in Grenada we call it lambi because it came from the French lambo to tear because you actually tear the conch out from the shell. So we call it lambi, <laughs> yeah. And um, it's popularly used in Grenada to make soup, lambi soup is, is a biggie. Lambi sauce is a biggie and stewed lambi. Is a, is a biggie. And apparently, lambi was cooked even by the Amerindians in Grenada. How we know this is that the shells, if you follow the shells, apparently they are mounds of shell. And as you get to the lower level, you realize that they didn't have the tool, like a metal tool, to puncture the lambi shell. So, like they used stones or wood to puncture it. And so the, the puncturing of the shell is quite different. So that indicates that the Amerindians, the Arabs and the Caribs, who were there before this guy came, who didn't discover anything, Columbus. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah, they were actually using lambi. They were harvesting and cooking lambi since Amerindian times. And what has grown very popular here too is, um, roast corn and boiled corn. The sweet corn here like you have. You will find lots of small businesses around the countryside on the side of the road, people selling roasted corn and boiled corn. It has become very popular as a small, small business industry. Okay, next slide please, thank you. Anna has a question and just- Okay, so go you ahead, know, yes. You, know, you have about 15 more minutes. Oh, 15 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Let's quickly Anna, go ahead. I was just curious, the sauce, what is it? So is that a sauce? I just looked it up and it said that it's almost like a pickled brine, like a like a it, it, liquid, like a hog. Yes, cake. but we don't make it um, that pickly. Uh oh. Um, you just use the lambi, cut it up. Sometimes you parboil it and then you add your seasonings. You add your tomato, your carrots, your scythe, your thyme, and other things like that. Okay. okay? Yes. Thank you. Okay, let us proceed quickly because we want to... Uh... Next slide, please. Okay, some of the popular drinks. Oh, no, back to the, yeah, the drinks. Yeah, cocoa tea. And I want to be particularly clear with this. What we call cocoa tea in Grenada is not like drawing from tea leaves. Cocoa tea is peculiar. We use the balls that are usually homemade from cocoa. And with that, we make cocoa tea, okay? Which is this thing, which is quite different from chocolate. Usually you use the powder to make a chocolate drink. We make cocoa tea, okay. So bush teas are popular, ginger beer, is usually at Christmas time, the sorrel drink I explained, citrus juices and drink, fruit juices, sea moth. From the seaweed, the type of moss we have grown in Grenada is usually the Gracilaria species. So it's quite different from what you find in the US and what you find like in England, the chondrus, from which you, may, from which you, um, you make collagen and the other things, yes. Sugarcane juice is very popular and moby. Moby is the bark of a fruit, a bark of a plant, from which you get a delicious bitter drink, which is popularly used. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, you had asked about some of the things I'm working on. Well, vanilla cultivation, curing, climate smart agriculture. I'm doing some work in that area. You know, doing the right practices for sustainability. Um, product development. You lost me? Zoom is off? No, we can hear you. We can hear you. No, but I'm not seeing the slide. I don't know what happened. Are you all seeing the slide? Yes. 
We hear you and see you or and see the slide. But I'm not seeing the slide. A, a nice lady came up in a picture. Huh. Let me go back and see if you can yeah. see. Can you see it now? No, there's somebody blocking me out. I'm um, not sure what happened. Can you just pull up the um, slide on on your end, just on your uh, computer? It's the one exactly. that says some area is being worked on. Okay, it is. Okay, I could just, if you've seen it, I, maybe I could just um, you can see it. Men mention it. Oh. Oops. Okay. Um, you were on climate uh, smart agriculture. Climate smart agriculture, yeah, climate smart agriculture, among other things. And, um, and product development. Yeah, product development. I, I help people a lot of the product development like beverages, snacks, and things like that. Um, I'm also looking at um, the varieties of West Indian bay leaf. We have one that has a citrusy taste as distinct from the regular bay leaf. Um, I'm also looking at food as medicine. You know, the foods that have um, nutritional, high nutritional value and hurricane smart cultivation. I'm looking at hurricane disaster smart cultivation where we leave some food in the ground so that even if a hurricane pass, we could harvest things like sweet potato and so we have food in the ground. So those are some of the major areas um, I know I'm looking at. And the final slide is really for you all. If you want to see some of the Grenadian cooking, you could visit YouTube on the slides that I um, I gave there. Do you, um, how much time do I have again? You have... Um... About 15 more minutes. Did you want me to pull up another? Yeah, pull up the other. Yeah, pull up the other. Yeah. Which one? Um, the one that the importance of go through quickly, the importance of um okay. not back to grenade here. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Okay. Yes, I can see you. You're back on. Okay. Okay, so we'll go through it very quickly. So you notice that on the flag, there is a nutmeg. And the stars represent the seven parishes of Grenada. Next slide. Okay, this is a quick history, a short history of nutmeg, the nutmeg industry in Grenada. The scientific label here. So actually nutmeg was introduced to Grenada since um, 1843, and we started exporting nutmeg in 1881. Um, um, and I told you in 2004, 2005, there was massive destruction. So um, whereas we were the second producer of nutmeg in the world, after Hurricane Ivan, we have dropped to about eight or ninth. Next slide, please. Okay. So nutmeg is beneficial to Grenada economically, socially, culturally, and, and historically. Next slide, we go too quickly. This shows you that uh, in 2004, before Hurricane Ivan, we used to make be making in the vicinity of maybe sometime $30 million from nutmeg. We are now down to maybe just three, four million. It is a dramatic drop in time. Next slide, please. Okay, so this was after the Hurricane Ivan, we decided to put in place a strategy. So you see where I was much younger then? I'm the person at the end there. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, those are the objectives of the strategy to improve the production of nutmeg after the hurricane, after the hurricane Ivan. Next, please. Okay. These are some of the major characteristics of our nutmeg. Our nutmeg is different from Indonesian nutmeg in that we are low in sulfur, low in aflatoxin. We use, we are organic, more or less organic. We have low risk of pesticide contamination. Um, we don't have heavy metals. And since we do not have um, any other wild species of nutmeg, we cannot adulterate. In other words, we cannot add false nutmeg seeds. Next slide, please. Okay, this is how nutmeg is sold on the world market. 
You could also really look at it maybe in your time. Next, please. This is the countries we sold to. Do you know we do not sell nutmeg directly to the United States? The United States buys the nutmeg that we sell to Germany. They, they recondition it or they repackage it in Germany and then send it over to the United States. The United States does not take nutmeg directly from us. That's crazy. Canada does. Canada does, but not the U.S. Is that because of NAFTA? Just quick question. Is that because of yes, NAFTA? Yes, it's a yes because of yes trading conditions and things like that. Next, please. Okay, next, please. We have those are some old figures. Okay, as I show you, the potential. Almost all of the this is a nutmeg fruit, so the outer part could be used for making jam, jellies, etc. The mace is used for medicinal and cosmetics. The leaf could be used medicinally. The shell is used as a growing medium for orchids and also for putting on the florids of nursery and things like that. And the kernel is what you use as the spice. The dry kernel is the spice for culinary mis, um, medicinal and cosmetic use. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the popular products we make is the, uh, from the pods. That's the yellow part is the nutmeg syrup. And the nutmeg syrup can be used in liquors, spicy rum, rum punch, mixed with honey and non-alcoholic beverages. And then you do jams, jellies, preserves, confectionery from the, from the pods. Next, please. Okay, these are some of the companies that are doing things in Grenada. Next, please. Continue. So these are some of, this is one of our popular product, nutmeg. This is a spray for the joints and the muscle, which was developed in Grenada. It uses nutmeg oil, among other things. Next, they, they, um, the inventor died not too long ago. And these are some of the jam product, the products, yeah. Jams, jellies, etc. from nutmeg. The nutmeg syrup has a property just like um, maple syrup. So you can use it on pancakes, etc. Next, please. These are some other products. Next, please. Uh, these are some of the other, the, the control of the nutmeg is under the Grenada Cooperative Nutmeg Association. And they are now looking at new products from all parts of the nutmeg again. So they're developing new and varied products, even things like pot and mix and things like that. Next slide, please. Okay. The medicinal use, well, yeah, I think you read over that. I'll come to that uh, next. And I, go ahead. And I've already spoken about um, the chemical composition and what's in nutmeg. You could read up. Next, please. Um, and nutmeg oil tends to have all these properties antimicrobial, insecticide, antioxidant, et cetera. Um, nutmeg oil can be used in toothpaste and body mixes, body creams, and things like that. Next, please. Skin creams. Uh, we'll go through this quickly. Cinnamon. And well, I've already mentioned some of the properties. So go ahead, cinnamon, go ahead. Clove, I mentioned some of the properties. Next, ginger, I mentioned some of the properties. Particularly good for upset stomach and could be used by pregnant women for morning, morning sickness because it, um, it helps prevent vomiting and, and controls of stomach in particular, apart from its other culinary uses. Next, please. Turmeric, I'd already explained some of the properties of turmeric. So go ahead. Next, please. Okay, spicy, thank you. But <laughs> you could, you, no, you could load, load, load the next one. It's just a little passage. What do you have, five minutes? Uh, we have five minutes, yes. Let me- Okay, load the next, load the next slide. Okay. Right, so this is just school children visiting my garden. I thought I would share that with you. Um, so we could go through it quickly, go ahead. So that's the name of my garden, Dr. G's Garden, Grenada. Actually, why? Actually, I had it called Guido's at first, but there's a garden in um, Atlanta, I think, named Guido's Garden. So I had to change my name. <laughs> yeah. Next, please. So these are school children, age ten and eleven. They're primary school, so they're not in secondary school. They're primary school children. So I had children visiting the garden to introduce them to plants and spices and things like that. And they found it very informative. So I like, you know, passing on information to the younger generation. Next, please. Turmeric, well, that has a turmeric plant. So we can go through quickly, next. 
Ginger. This is the ginger flower. I don't know something, you know. The ginger actually has a beautiful flower. Next. The children going down between the cocoa, the cocoa trees. Next. This is black pepper. Black pepper goes on a vine. And you know from black pepper, you can get four peppers. You can actually get the black pepper if you dry it in the sun. If you dry it in the shade, that is what you get, green pepper. If you take off the skin, the green inside is white. That is why they sell as white pepper. And if you let it ripe, it turns red. That is why they sell as red pepper. Next, please. Um, that's vanilla. That's the green vanilla beans hanging on the vine, which is an orchid. Next, please. That's nutmeg flowers. And nutmeg has male and female flowers. So the male trees usually are not productive. But what we find, there is a degree of um, hermaphroditism in that sometimes male trees turn into female after a time. This is something that is seen with nutmeg here. Yeah. And sometimes you have 20% male, 80% female. Mm. The phenomenon we see with nutmeg. <laughs> Next, please. Okay, that's the cinnamon again, cinnamon plant. Next, please. Bay leaf. Also, um, the Patois name or the French kind of some Creole name for bay leaf is Boisden, which really short is really the Bois de India, is wood of India. So they just call it Boisden in Patois, in Creole. Next, please. That is the, at this stage is when you harvest clove, when the buds are not open. That is when you harvest clove and dry it to get that beautiful clove scent. So you don't, that's how the flower buds. Next, please. And that's the scientific name for clove. Next, please. Children walking down in the garden among the cocoa trees and spice trees. And finally, to end, they are the children in what I call my rock garden, where I do paintings on the stones. And that's where they sit and have their lunch. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any final questions? Just want to thank final you. questions. Yes. I have a question. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. Hey, okay. So I'm a nursing major. I take Miss Palmer class I'm, I'm and Dr. Lecture, Hamilton I'm class. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I take Miss Palmer class and Dr. Hamilton class. Yes. And I want to be a naturopathic nurse. And I was Looking up the uses of nutmeg and it's antibacterial, I want to create an oil that yeah. can be used um, oil, oily and on the skin. But I know that nutmeg can be hallucinogenic. So how can I use it and be safe? It's hallucinogenic if eaten in large quantities. Okay. Yes, especially if, if it's in bad. But for the skin also, you could use it in a... But you will have to have a, you'll have to mix it with one of the blended oils, either like olive oil or coconut oil or you know the special oils for the skin. You okay, wouldn't use okay, it okay. you wouldn't use it direct, but you'll have to maybe do a mixture. So you could come up with a formula, you could formulate a mixture with some of the, the gentler oils. Okay, so it'd be safer to use it on the skin instead of oily. Okay. Yeah, instead of oily, instead of orally, yeah. All right, thank you. Yes. Any other question in my few minutes remaining? Well, this or was comments? this was a fabulous presentation. Um, you know, I've 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 been blessed to call you my uncle and <laughs> <laughs> to have grown up in a house full of uh, you know, scholarly knowledge and you know just seeing all your plans to kind of it's 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 it put seeds in me you know but I didn't realize I was happening when I was a little girl so I thank you so much and you know you and Auntie Caroline you were the ones who kind of put me on the path for to learn more about food as medicine and and just everything that food can do for us so I appreciate that and 
we're looking forward to hopefully planning to bring students next year. Oh yes, that would be looking forward to it. I'm planning an agenda already. Uh, you, right. you, would be, you would be overwhelmed. You'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> and LaCarrie, you can help me and uh, Dr. Hamilton, anybody on here as well, you know, bring some nursing students. I think that would be amazing. Oh yes, bring some nursing students to Grenada. It would be fantastic, yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely yes. fantastic. Yes. Uh, involving all the fruits and the spices and the dishes and, and also the scenery, you know, because that's, that's a whole year. Because we have we have little waterfalls and, and there are hiking trails and, you know, you name it. And the beaches. Oh, we, the, some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. <laughs> I heard, I heard. I, white I, sand, I, sparkling white. There's a joke I give. If your wedding band falls in the water, you could walk off and then walk back and come and pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could talk for another time, but I did show my students a little bit about Maurice Bishop and yes. the Grenadian Revolution. Yes. So perhaps we can talk about that when we're in Grenada. We would be interested to learn about the political side of Grenada yes. as well. And then there was an early revolutionary called Fedor, mm -hmm. which is another, um, which, um, yeah. and I want to end by telling Fedor, so we would, and is an, that estate up there was where the first nutmegs were planted. And he was one of the Frenchmen who revolted against the British. Mm. There's a whole history about that, which I'll indulge you in. And incidentally, I, I didn't get to read in a poem written on nutmeg by one Dr. Merle Collins, but she is now to share the connection. She is now writing a book on Malcolm X mother, who is from a village in Grenada. Wow. Yeah, so wow. that connection, yeah, Malcolm X's mother is from Grenada. Yes, yes. So she's yes. now right. Well, Dr. Mull Collins is writing a book on Malcolm X's mother. Well, we look forward to reading that and <laughs> yes. don't want the Zoom to cut us off. So I'm going to have to end us right here so I can make sure that I record and document this because you gave us so much knowledge mm -hmm. in a short amount of time and we can't wait to spend more time with you. So thank you, Dr. Marcel. Thank you, Uncle Guido. For sure. It's my <laughs> pleasure. It's my pleasure. Zella. And to all your students, everybody have a, a wonderful Christmas. Yes. Yes. And drink <laughs> lots of Sorrel for us. <laughs> yes. And all the best for the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Be well, yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.